Things to look out for if they change the rules on required minimum distributions, RMDs. Uh, Mary sent me this email today, and uh, I thought this is actually profound, incredibly well, uh, well uh, thought of, and I uh, had it, it totally escaped my my own thinking on the increasing uh, RMDs. My own thinking had been, well, if they increase RMDs, are they actually going to change the tables? I mean, they might say you don't have to take an RMD at 70, uh, but you're going to have to take it at 75 instead. Instead of being an RMD at 70, which is divided by 27.4, they might still say your RMD at 75, the divides will be 22.9. So while you get another five years of tax deferral, uh, the distribution period, i.e. the divisor won't change. Now, I don't know that, but I could easily see that. So you have a larger and larger and larger RMD, uh, which means more and more taxes to the federal government, which puts more and more taxpayers in higher tax brackets. That is one thing for sure. I completely think, there's, look, there's huge tailwinds on increasing the RMDs, by the way. I mean, I don't think anyone has any, uh, I, I don't know who would argue against that for a, an owner of an IRA, a qualified retirement account, or the spouse of, of such. I, I, Democrats, Republicans, no one's going to argue that. Now, they're going to try to put in some other sausage making, which might make it uh, be extinguished before it comes to law. I don't know. I could easily see rules changing on RMDs. And I can also see rules changing on stretch IRAs for non-spousal beneficiaries. I, I would be, I, I'm not a gambler, but I'd be willing to bet uh, 70, 30 odds that within the next five, six years, uh, there will be no longer stretch IRAs uh, for Roth or uh, traditional IRAs. I, I could easily see that happening. Um, and you think about it, and that's for non-spousal beneficiaries. They're going to say, hey, at the end of the day, IRAs have already been known, uh, established by Supreme Court unanimously not to be a retirement account. So why should we give you tax favorability for non-spousal IRAs for non-retirement accounts? Thus, we're going to make you take distributions within five or 10 years of the inheritance. I could easily see that happening. And again, if you have a traditional IRA uh, that could wallop you to your kids if your kids are in their prime earning years. But anyway, so let's read what Mary said. This is incredibly interesting and insightful. She goes, hey, Josh, had an aha moment when running scenarios through my mind. Uh, being an odd sort of person, Mary, uh, she likes to go to uh, Las Vegas and gamble, or not gamble, but uh, play poker. Uh, very interesting lady, actually, uh, Mary. Um, she also uh, very big in sports. And, uh, and her dad took her to the racetracks when she was young. So I thought uh, that was pretty interesting, actually. And, uh, uh, so an odd sort of person, I don't know, I've seen a card counter, but certainly someone who knows their way around a, a poker table for sure. Uh, I would put the odds that they're going to extend the RMD age at around 80%. I completely agree with that. I realize that while they, being the feds, would lose some revenue because people would not be going as gung-ho about conversions as they likely uh, as they likely gain, as they likely would, they will, they will gain again. The feds will gain much more because people being people will let things ride and not do conversions because they don't have to. A fair percentage of those folks who would have otherwise done conversions will pass away before the RMD age or before the RMD becomes too much. And the entire amount will be transferred to the heirs will be taxable without a stepped up basis. I would hazard a guess they would make a ton more money from this than they would lose by extending the RMD age. I completely, completely agree. In fact, I, uh, I, I would even add to that. She talks about the errors. I'm taking. I'm even talking surviving spouse. So let's say you're 70 years old. You got some RMDs. You got to start taking out, regardless if you need them or not. It's old Josh with Charlotte, 66. I'm 70. I got to start taking money from my IRA. I start pulling it out. I don't need it, so I put it in a taxable account. All right. So at our death. Uh, we have already paid tax on the bulk of it. Uh, Charlotte would inherit half of that property tax-free anyway for step-up basis. The non-IRA property, the tax or brokerage account property, that would be. Uh, if, she, if we lived in a community property state, as long as she, they didn't screw up the title, she would get the whole thing tax-free. Not in the IRA. So now we're 70, we're 71, we're adding four or $5,000 a year to our brokerage account. We're paying tax on that because of RMD tables, and I die at 76. All right, so now Charlotte is 72, I'm 76. I've had six years in which to take required minimum distributions out in order to pay taxes on that as a married filing jointly taxpayer. Six years of moving money from my IRA that I might not need at all and put in a taxable account in which the basis on that taxable account is also growing because there's any dividends, income, or capital gains that increases the basis to a married filing jointly couple. And she gets a step up basis anyway. So she'll inherit that over here tax-free 
for the most part, and some will be taxed, but it won't be much. So some because there's not much money in there to begin with. The IRA will have been reduced by six years of required distributions of which we pay taxes on as a married filing joint lease taxpayer. And whatever is remaining, uh, she'll have to pay tax on as the uh, required distributions to the su uh, surviving spouse. But fast forward to say RMDs are now 75. You don't have to take RMDs till 75. So all of those preceding five years from 70 to 75, I did nothing. I just let it grow. It grew, it grew, and grew, and grew. And only for one year from 75 to 76 that I take required distributions and pay taxes of married, final, and jointly taxpaying unit and put it into that brokerage account. That's it. Everything else at that point is going to be transferred to Charlotte completely taxable to her as ordinary income with her own RMD tables, uh, which again, as, and she'll be a single taxpayer. She will no longer be a joint taxpayer, which means everything else, if I talked a million times to somebody about my book, will be now subject to increased taxes as well. And now on the other hand, if she were to leave a significant brokerage account at her death, she's a surviving spouse to the kids, they would just receive that with a step up basis, completely tax free. But because RMD tables are pushed out, now she inherits my IRA when she's 72. She doesn't have to take her first RMD for another four years until she's 76. You see, so now we've got, uh, that's 10 more years, essentially, of tax deferral growth. And that sounds good, other than the fact that now she'll have bigger RMDs as a single taxpayer, as opposed to bearing filing jointly, less in the brokerage account, which will transfer tax free to the kids. And you have a bigger IRA, which will tax the kids and most likely will uh, some kind of limits on how long they can have to take full distributions that will be taxable to them. So I, I man, completely agree with Mary's assessment here. It's, it's uh, I think if the government were to say, you know, we're going to give away a little bit uh, from a tax perspective because uh, we're going to allow people to uh, not take RMB sooner. We're going to make it you know, freaking $3 a one later on down the road. I could easily see that. So Good email, Mary. Uh, just be careful. More reasons to start the Roth conversion sooner rather than later. All right, we'll see you next time.